Thank you, Coach. Pressure naman ako, ano ba yan? Uh, ask my wife if I actually live this out. No? So, <laughs> but um, she actually told me to wear pink today kasi malapit na daw Valentine's Day. Uh, kasi Valentine's Day, di ba red? So pink muna kasi we're not there yet. No? But almost there. Um, gaya ng mga ibang relationship natin, di ba? Di pa kayo, pero parang kayo na. So, guys, come on. <laughs> Anyway, are you guys ready for today? I'm just, uh, I'm fired up. Um, I'm here, I'm humbly just approaching this again. I've been receiving, honestly, a ton of messages since last week because of, uh, I don't know if something was just broken in the spirit. Pastor Jerome actually mentioned that, that Jesus, the suffering of Jesus was more than just spiritual and physical. He had psychological things that was going on. At one point, he was bleeding. He was bleeding in the garden, you know, which was a condition. It was a psychological condition. And what if, you know, last week we we're talking about what if it's not, you know, we know you're saved in the Lord, right? Who, who here you're saved? You believe in Jesus has saved you, right, from your sins. But are you really free? Sometimes, you know, before you cross the Jordan, have you actually crossed your Red Sea first? Have you been delivered? So now you could really pursue the promises of God in your life. And sometimes that's the bottleneck. No? So uh, just a side note. So today, <laughs> very simple message just to cap it off. I'm going to fire on all cylinders this morning because there's really no way for me to cover Daniel in four weeks. Uh, if you ask me, probably we should have like a whole semester and maybe not in church but a like class and we do that together because there's a lot to unpack and, uh, and discover this life ni Daniel. But I'm just going to zero in on this and say, made for inheritance. Everybody say inheritance. Turn to the person next to you and say, you are made for inheritance. It's how God uses His people, His children, His kingdom people to impact the world with kingdom influence. Uh, can we all stand? And I'm just going to echo what Pastor Jerome has already read and declared over us. Um, at the beginning of this year, I'll read in Proverbs 3. My son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commands. For length of days and long life and peace they will add to you. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them in the tablet of your heart. And in verse 4, and so find favor, everybody say favor. favor, and high esteem, which is also good understanding. Everybody say understanding. understanding in the sight of God and man. And Daniel has embodied this in his life. Father, we thank you, Lord, and we bless you. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that your word is life, that you are the living word, that you're the word made flesh and also made available for us, Lord, to partake your Logos, Lord God, so that it becomes a revelation in our spirits, Lord, that we get to cultivate and nurture the excellent spirit as we partner with the Holy Spirit today. Father, I thank you, Lord, that, Lord, that these are not my words, Lord. This is your heart, God, for every inner man present in this room, Lord, that you desire communion, that you desire, Lord, a deeper relationship with us, Lord, and it's more than just um, you saving us, God, but you have prepared something good for your children, and we can receive that today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, okay, let's give the Lord a clap. <laughs> See, Lord, no? Um, yeah. Uh, so far, question Has God been speaking to you the last three weeks about what's going on, uh, what we're talking about? <laughs> Uh, me and my wife just had uh, long conversations this week uh, just in response to the message last week. And um, just a quick recap, if we would just look at um, what we see in Daniel, the excellent spirit, if I would just summarize in these three statements that, that it's really, it starts with intimacy. Everybody say intimacy. And we've been, uh, we've been revisiting this uh, every week. That this is the anchor. There's no shortcuts. No, we can't say, um, sure, we might have the favor of God in our life, but are we truly uh, pursuing Him, pursuing a deeper relationship 
with Him. And we've seen that it's also forged in the fires of intercession. Everybody say intercession. If you're a Christian, if you're saying you're a Christian, you're called to intercession. Amen? And that's how God moves in our hearts and how uh, we get to influence the world around us. And it also prepares for inheritance. Everybody say inheritance. <laughs> so, yun yung pinag-usapan natin last week, no? The, how do we steward the favor of God with a lifestyle of prayer? We saw this in the life of Daniel and some sort of template or, uh, or some sort of framework on how he lived his life. But it's not exactly just the patterns that we see sa buhay ni Daniel, but it's really his devotion to the Lord. It starts with intimacy, you know? Yung passion niya was also uh, brought him into this, the disciplines, you know, the, the fasting, the prayer, and how that lifestyle, uh, the, the fruit ng lifestyle na yun was he, was, he became influential even to emperors and kings. And we've said this, there is something in you that is greater than you. Do you believe that? There's someone, and not, not necessarily something, but someone. It's the Holy Spirit. Uh, Hebrews actually talks about we actually have a better covenant now. You know, Daniel had to parang trust in, you know, uh, trust in the Lord and His Word. But Jesus has, wasn't, a, you know, yung, the cross hasn't happened yet. No, but because of Jesus, the cross, we have something greater now than Daniel had. We don't just get to, uh, you know, parang practice fasting and prayer, but we get to Parang, uh, go deeper, you know, the, the veil was already torn. You know, we, we, we can enter boldly into the throne of grace and the communion with God's spirit and our spirit uh, cultivating that within us. And we also said that uh, because Daniel and his friends distinguished themselves, you know, that they were built different. How do we face our lions or giants in fiery furnaces in life? And last week, just real quick, how as we submit to Him, as we begin to nurture that spirit, that He can actually transform the trials, you know, our traumas into triumph. And um, yeah, just a, just a real quick look at that. I wanted to show you something because of uh, what we talked about last week and me and my wife are starting to take stock of what happened um, the last... Uh, just the last couple of years, especially in our marriage, you know, things that maybe we haven't dealt with, maybe things we kept hidden even from each other, you know, no, sometimes we're okay, but is God really breaking through or we're praying for breakthrough, but there's always been something that's parang hindering, hindering God to, to uh, move or to really give us the blessing and the breakthrough in our lives. Uh, we were... Last week, after I preached a message, we were driving home. And it was actually my daughter, no? see, see Aria, my second daughter, who's three years old. No? And for some reason, she says something. Uh, Jane was with us. I don't know if Jane is here. Jane took a ride with us. And she started, uh, Aria started to tell this story. Now, imagine a three-year-old telling this story. And this is what happened in the story uh, last year, three of us were hospitalized, uh, me and my two kids, except, uh, except Charmaine. There was this one incident, one of, one of those occasions, it was Sam. No? And immediately after our trip from Thailand, um, we, we went through this trial. No? And um, that's, uh, I can't even explain. You know, you know one of those where you wake up and you just... You, Lord, I na. Yung ganun, Lord, tama na. Please, hindi ko na kaya to, no? So it was one of those moments. And so uh, we were there at the hospital. We were praying uh, together. Uh, and every single day, you know, we would check uh, Sam's temperature. The nurse would come. And the fever would not go down, no? Negative siya sa COVID. Pero the fever would not go down. It started to worry me and my wife, you know. But thank God, no, through, that, through all of that, the Lord kept us. And in the midst of that, uh, ako na yung linalagnat, no? Nasabi na si Maine na rin yung linalagnat. And so this can't be happening. This can't be happening. And uh, syempre naiwan sa grandparents, no? Kay uh, dad's, uh, mom cell and dad siya, si, si Arya. So I think it was our third day in the hospital when 
um, me and my wife agreed, I think it's time for you to, to go back home first and, and take Arya uh, and just be with her. And on the way home, this is what happened. Uh, I think, I don't know if, in na mute ko naman siya, no? but in the next slide, this is what happened. Uh, and this was already halfway of me noticing. There was like 15 uh, fire trucks no? uh, in Visayas Avenue. And the scene was like a scene from a movie. So, so um, minute ko na yung sound kasi pangit yung boses ko dyan. But I was actually sending this to my wife. What's happening? You know, so, ito yung nangyayari. And then there was a fire uh, just literally the next block next to uh, where our neighborhood was. So I couldn't even uh, get in to where I was supposed to get in. But somehow I was able to get in, and then I take Arya, and that was the view of me walking towards where her house was because it was around that corner. So imagine I'm carrying, I'm carrying Arya. We were walking straight to the fire. No? Pero dun yung view was, it was there, pero it was really just situated below where the smoke was. Um, bad idea as a parent, you know, you should be running away from the fire, not towards the fire. But uh, for some reason, we felt, okay, that was probably a block away, but we could hear the sirens, and um, I wanted to see if, you know, if I needed to pack or... You know, and my wife was like, if something happens, you know, we were like, what's going on? We're, we're, we're in the hospital, we're nakakasakita tayo, and then, meron bang threat din dun sa bahay natin? So parang, what's going There was like, it was like, the Lord was just, it was like the, our fiery furnace, right? And so we couldn't explain. We were just started to pray, I started to speak in tongues, we were started sending prayers to each other. And uh, so I'm carrying Arya, she sees the fire, and she, says, she embraces me, and she says, um, I'm so scared, you know, of these things, and we should go away. And, and um, again, as a parent, you should be running away. But for some reason, I, would, I had to go to the house, and my wife is like, get our passports, you know, get everything ready, just in case. Long story short, uh, the sirens uh, was so loud, uh, so me and Arya in the bedroom, until probably 1 a.m. This is probably 9, uh, 9 p.m., and until 1 a.m. may sirens. No? So I, I was just there awake and my daughter is now sound asleep. And why I wanted to share this, because it, it's very interesting. Arya brings that up last week uh, when we were going home. No? So I think she was listening to my marriage, uh, to my, my mess, no, listening to my message about talking to the, thro- the trauma. No? So she, she, remind, she reminds us, remember, I, I, we were in the fire. There was a fire, and I was so scared. And, uh, and Jane was there, and she's like, oh, really? What happened? And then, nagpakwento na si Jane, sa nangyari. But she said, then something after uh, telling the story, Arya just goes, yeah, but my dad was there to protect me. <laughs> my dad was there to protect me. And have, have you been through that in your life where the storms rage, the fiery furnace, the fiery trial, and sometimes all you got to do is just trust that he's there with you? My dad was there to protect me, and it kind of hit me different when we see the fiery furnace of the three burning men. There was a fourth man in the fire, and that becomes a picture. The fire in them was greater than the fire outside of them. And so that's why I wanted to encourage you with that word because we get to see that because of all that, the swirl of, you know, diba ang sabi natin last week, God does not want you medium well. He wants you well done. Diba? So we submit. Sometimes we submit to the heat of life, you know, the the, the fiery trials. And that prepares us for what? It prepares us for inheritance. Everybody say inheritance. And I want you to say this again. You know, you were made for inheritance. Declare this over yourself. I was made for inheritance. Let me read uh, in Daniel 6. This is when um, he was about to submit himself to the lion's den. Uh, there was a, the, he, here's the decree that he was going to get thrown to the lion's den, but then this is what he did. His response niya ito, no? Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went home, and in his upper room, he met with God. That was intimacy. 
with his window open toward Jerusalem, which was his inheritance. He knew the word of God, the promise of God that he, he was going to restore his people back to Jerusalem. He knelt down on his knees three times that day, prayed and gave thanks, which was intercession. Do you know that when we were singing, uh, that we were thanking him, that was actually a position of intercession because we're allowing him to speak life into whatever situation we're in. Even if we're going through bad things, that we get to give thanks to him in a place of intercession. And he did this before his God in what was his custom since the early days. This was the consistency, decades, the life that Daniel lived, cultivating the excellent spirit, cultivating, responding to the favor of God rightly, you know, as a righteous man before the Lord. In uh, another chapter, we see uh, this is uh, this is the the Belteshazzar when he was asking Daniel to to talk about his dream. He says this. This is uncommon, yah, kay Daniel. I know that the spirit of the holy God is in you. This is when man begins to recognize that the favor of God is on your life, and no secret. Everybody say secret. No secret troubles you. No secret is hidden from you. What kind of man or woman would you have to be to know God's secrets? You'd have to be really close to Him, right? Intimacy. God entrusts His secrets. He he tells his friends, his disciples, I no longer call you servants. I call you friends. And that's when Jesus started to reveal the secrets of his heart to his disciples, to his friends. Now, we're going to look a little bit, and this is um, actually, I felt like maybe one of Daniel's visions we should have touched on a little bit more. Um, but again, I'm going to leave that to Pastor Jerome and how he wants to. Maybe the next two Sundays. But just one picture of one of the visions, okay? This was, this was Nebuchadnezzar who had a dream. And uh, Daniel, and when he, remember when he asked his friends, pray for me so that we get to interpret the dream. And the Lord reveals the secret. Quick, just a summary, just quick, you know, quick fire. What the dream was, Nebuchadnezzar uh, sees this image and the image was created out of these different uh, elements. You know, it was gold, it was silver, it was bronze, iron, uh, and iron and clay. And as he sees the image erect, uh, if you read your Bible, that there was a stone that wasn't crafted by human hands. A stone that wasn't crafted by human hands. And we know that now when Jesus came, he was the chief cornerstone. The stone hits the foundation, hits the feet, and crumbles the entire image, and the stone turns into a mountain that covers the entire earth. So turn on your sanctified imagination for a little bit. No? Nag-fasting naman tayo. So I'm speaking to the excellent spirit in you. Right? Just, just turn that on. What, what would that image, you know, very, very majestic. And then a stone wasn't created by human hands, we know that's Jesus. We know that's, that's, that's something. You know, if it's not crafted by human hands, we know what that is. But he, he, the, the stone strikes the foundation of the statue, and the stone turns into a mountain. Uh, I encourage you. I, I, I'm, I'm happy, and almost, it almost very, it's comforting, actually, when we were worshiping to me. And I started to thank the Lord as we were singing that song. Uh, makes me want to shout, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. But I started thanking the Lord um, specifically and said, Lord, I thank you that I belong to a church community that loves to worship. And I belong to a church community that loves the Word of God. Right? And so let me urge you and encourage you. You know, the things that we talk about here shouldn't rob you of your own pursuit, you know? Shouldn't rob you of your own seeking, you know? We're not here spoon-feeding information to you. There's a difference between information and revelation, right? 
There's a difference. And so I encourage you to read the story. If you don't know the story yet, read the book of Daniel. So ito yung nangyari, no? And actually, yung vision sa, sa Daniel 2 actually parang is the foundation of almost every other vision that we see uh, in the book. So I wish I could say more about that. But a little bit fast forward, Daniel rec- uh, receives visions, interprets visions of kings, but one of the greatest visions, I would say, is found in Daniel 7. And the greatest vision of Daniel is the vision of the Son of Man. Everybody say, Son of Man. Woo! <laughs> Lord, help me. I don't know. But every, say it again, Son of Man. We know who that is, right? That's Jesus. But let's read it first. Let's read it real quick. I'm just going to go through this. So he sees the beasts. There are four beasts. But then he sees, suddenly sees this vision. The, sh- the vision shifts from these uh, violent beasts that he sees. And the vision uh, parang shifts, nag shift yung scenery into the throne of God. And this is what happened. I watched till thrones were put in place and the Ancient of Days was seated. Everybody say seated. So the Ancient of Days, that's the Father, that's the creator of the entire universe. He's seated. His garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head was like pure wool. His throne was a fiery flame, its wheels a burning fire. His throne has wheels. But it's not a wheelchair, right? There's wheels on the thrones of God. That means that his dominion, his authority is not tied to one place. Wherever he goes, he has dominion, he has authority. Amen? So his wheels has, has a, yun, yung throne has wheels. And a fiery stream issued and came forth before him. A thousand thousands ministered to him. Ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. You can turn on your sanctified imagination, okay? The excellent spirit. Let, let's all turn it on today. 10,000 times 10,000 stood before him and the court was seated and the books were open. You know, when you come to, uh, when, a, when an analyst or uh, someone who needs to check the books in a company, <laughs> it's almost like there, there was like a, the ancient of days, God himself was ready to take account of everything that's happening. He's opening, opening the books, getting ready to judge. A few verses later, he was watching. This is, this is Daniel. I was watching in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man, coming with the clouds of heaven, he came to the ancient of days. Look at the audacity of this Son of Man. He approaches the King of the universe. He approaches the Creator Himself without shame as if it were they were equals. He came to the Ancient of Days. They brought him near before him. Then to him was given. Everybody say given. Amen. Given dominion and glory and a kingdom that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away. Remember the stone and the mountain that grows uh, bigger than the earth? It shall not pass away. And his kingdom, the one which shall not be destroyed. This is the picture, okay? Now, why, why does this matter? Okay? And we don't get to fully grasp this, I think, now, because Jesus' favorite title is Son of Man. He calls himself, actually, he does not even call himself directly the Son of God. He hints that he's the Son of God. Roughly 40-something times in the, in the Gospels. But he calls himself verbatim son of man more than 80 times. Almost double. Ezekiel talks about the son of man, but he was talking about humans. No? That we, the sons of men. The son of man. And this, there was no divinity. But here, there's a son of man approaching purely, a purely divine being. And Jesus, his favorite title, his favorite thing to call himself was the Son of Man. Now, to the Jewish mind, the Son of God was no, no claim to divine. No? 
Because David was a son of God. Adam was a son of God. But when Jesus started calling himself the son of man, that's when the Pharisees started to raise their eyebrows. Because they know, is he talking about what Daniel was talking about? So see this. Where are we in the picture? This is Jesus, the son of man. He comes. The likeness of the Father. Jesus said, when you see me, you see the Father. And sometimes we want to try to overinterpret things. And what I love about Scripture, sometimes it interprets itself, no? And, you know, we could get distracted with the details. Ano ba yung beast? No? Sino ba yun? Si Trump ba yun? Uh, si Duterte ba yun? <laughs> nah, I'm just, uh, but sometimes we, we distract ourselves from the real issue, the real why. And to me, what the vision really points to is Jesus is the Son of Man. When we read Revelations, po, no, Revelations 1, 1 said, it is not the revelation of the Antichrist, it's the revelation of Jesus Christ. So our, our eyes should be on Him. Jesus, our, we should be gazing on Him, we should be beholding Him. So this is what happens, and I came near to one of those who stood by me, it was an angel, and asked him the truth. What does this mean? He told me and made known to me the interpretation of these things. And this is what the angel said. Those great beasts which are four are four kings which arise out of the earth. And this, listen to this. But the saints of the Most High shall receive. Everybody say receive. The saints of the Most High shall receive the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. It wasn't enough to say forever once. He had to say even forever and ever. Who are the saints of the Most High? You don't believe you're one of the saints? <laughs> Who are the saints? This is the inheritance. This is almost, almost plainly set before us through Daniel that this is what it's, it, you know, what it's about. So, ah, Lord help. <laughs> is this good? This is for me. Anyway. So number one, believe. Everybody say believe. Believe, believe that you have an inheritance in Jesus. Turn to the person next to you and say, do you believe? In Colossians 1, I love this. The Apostle Paul exhorts the Colossian church. He says that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing Him, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might, according to His glorious power for all patience and long-suffering, with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. Put your hand in your heart. Say, I'm a partaker. We get to partake in His inheritance. You know, I love this. Because the yung, yung, yung term na partake means it actually belongs to someone and we get to share. Because the inheritance belongs to Jesus. In uh, in a I would say this, inheritance is also attached to your identity. Everybody say identity. In Romans 8, verse 16, that you may walk worthy of the Lord, almost the same language uh, in Colossians, walk worthy of the Lord, the Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit. You see that? The Spirit of God, Holy Spirit, bears witness with our spirit. That's the communion. That's how the excellent spirit is cultivated and nurtured. It bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with Him, that we may also be glorified together. How would you live your life knowing you are an heir? I told this story a couple of weeks ago, how I met this mother and daughter, and uh, you know, they were, you know, 
having a little bit of disagreements because the daughters start, start to be in a relationship. No? And so I was already fast forwarding years and having that conversation with my daughters. But, but one of the things that hit me was she starts speaking to her daughter and says, but you're an heir. You're not just anybody. You're an heir. What if you were to inherit uh, $10 million tomorrow? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to, to add that dimension. How are you going to live your life? You're an heir. You're an heir. Number two is receive. Everybody say receive. receive. The inheritance God has for you, inheritance is not something to be achieved, but something to be received. Binanggit na ni Coach Hannah kanina. But in order to receive an inheritance, someone has to die, right? You know, a loved one, usually your parents. Uh, and with the spiritual inheritance we have and more, that we have, the spiritual gifts that we have in the Lord, Jesus did not just subject himself, you know, to suffering and beating. He actually submitted himself. He was obedient even unto death, death on the cross. And I love how it didn't stop there, right? He died. He was buried for three days. We know the story, right? Who knows the gospel? He was buried. And then he rose again on the third day, yes, to affirm what he's done, to confirm what he's done, to affirm that, to affirm that he paid the price for our sins, that there's proof now. What happens? He ascends. First, he appears to almost 500 disciples, and then he ascends to heaven. And that's where Jesus is right now, seated at the right hand of the Father. But how do we re receive? And I would say this, it's receiving by seeking. Matthew 6. But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. You know, when, uh, you know when someone, uh, hey, I sent you Gcash. No? Tita Minette sent me Gcash. How much? <laughs> uh, just uh, I, re I received it, right? Uh, but then I have, to, I have to look it up. No? I have to seek my phone. <laughs> um, one funny story. And uh, again, I'm... I'm this is uh, just my stupidity. Uh, one of my trips uh, when I was still in Bible college, and actually that's why I want to honor this house because a lot of you guys here um, made that possible for me. It's more than 10, oh, 10 years ago. Ten, yeah. So on one of these trips, I had almost six, $7,000 in cash. Pang tuition ko lang yan. Ganun ko po kamahal. And... Um, and uh, my father, Jerome, he booked my flight. No? And si dad, magaling po mag-book ng flight. No? He would say, it's 1 a.m. yung pala 1 p.m. So, <laughs> anyway, so he books my flight. And I was, I, I think I had a nine-hour layover in Atlanta. And I get it, you know. I'm, I'm running on his tab, so uh, he's going to take the cheaper flights. And that's okay. And what I love about yung stopover sa Atlanta Airport, it's probably one of the biggest airports in the U.S. So I could just kill time there. You know, I could uh, go in a cafe, watch a movie, so on and so forth. And then two hours before my connecting flight, dun na ako sa gate. Anyway, so, um, so meron pang, there's like a train. Pal. It's like Singapore, no? And there's a train for me to go to the other gate. So what I do is I first find out where my gate is uh, the first hour I arrive, so eight hours, uh, eight, nine hours span. <laughs> I go to the gate, and I just like, okay, so here's what I'm going back to, and uh, just, you know, mark it in my head, my memory, and then I can go around. So I sit down for a bit. You know, I'm going to rest a little bit. I sit down, then put some big gates, uh, waiting area in the gate, and then, you know, just 
my things, parang dito ba lahat, ganyan. And then I realized the $7,000 is missing. <sighs> anyway. Oh, it wasn't in my bag. It wasn't in my pocket. Uh, even my jacket. So it wasn't there. So I rushed back to where I came from. I tried to trace back. Um, I bought coffee in this cafe uh, as I was walking. So I started to trace back. And, you know, and, you know I'm starting to have cold sweat. I so all those things. I'm, I'm panicking at this point. Uh, two hours pass, I couldn't find it. Three hours pass, I couldn't find it. I go back to the gate. So I, you know, there's probably three hours left at this point. Um, another hour sitting down and, you know, about, uh, holding back my tears. I take out my laptop. I was probably about, I think I was about to email dad and something happened and, uh, you know, I will not see you again. <laughs> anyway, uh, so, so, so that happened, right? And for some reason, you know, have I prayed yet? Have I prayed where I could find it? I haven't prayed. And so, Lord, please, you know, para na ako si Lou Ingle. Lord, nasan na yun? Lagot ako. Lagot ako. I put my hand in my heart, and then I feel it. I was wearing like a body bag, no? and it was in my heart the whole time. So, so some of us don't know what we have. Right? Grabe yung tao ni Tita Minit. Anyway. So I've wasted, and isn't that like a picture of life? Sometimes we waste hours, we waste years, we waste weeks not knowing what we have in the Lord. So are you going to receive it today? <laughs> receive the kingdom. Learn from my s- stupidity, okay? <laughs> so we seek first the kingdom of God. In Proverbs 25, I love this. It is the glory of God to conceal a matter but the glory of kings is to search out the matter. The glory of kings is to search it out. It's in the seeking that you become who you really are in the Lord. That's how you receive. God is in the business of turning shepherds into kings. But it's in the seeking. That's what happens in between. When you become, when you step into your kingly anointing, you know, because we are royal priests in Him, that's when we get to steward the inheritance that God has for us. Amen? Are you blessed? I think you're more blessed with my pain. Now, inheritance also speaks of impact. Everybody say impact. And influence. Everybody say influence. And I love this, how, you know, sometimes the church and even the school, you know, where maybe, maybe... Influence takes a little bit of time. You know, we get to journey together. We get to be family first. We get to be a community before we can be an impact to the world around us. When we started JREV, I think it was that. It was also like the big guns, you know, of the kingdom. This is how we impact. This is how we storm the gates of hell. This is how we raise up a generation. But impact and influence come together. How do we impact the world? Simple, by revealing the beauty of Jesus. I ask, uh, I ask, you know, people I journey with in the house of prayer, we ask this question to each other, does your life reveal the beauty of Jesus? Does your life reveal the beauty of Jesus? Number three, (sighs) this is honestly, this the last three weeks, I'm really preaching to myself. Number three is prepare. Everybody say prepare. prepare. We believe, we receive, we prepare. We believe, we receive, we prepare for the inheritance God has for you. Simple question. And I would say maybe many of us know this, some of us not. I've been having conversations even with my wife about this. But what are you called to? What's your calling? What are you called to? 
Start asking yourself again. What's your calling in the Lord? What's your assignment? What's your purpose? Are you in your job right now just for the money? <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, but there's, there's something. There's something beyond that, right? There's something. Are you in ministry just because there were no other options? What's your calling? And more than the what, I would say this is the foundation. That's why intimacy is the starting point. Matthew 20 Starting verse 25, it said, But Jesus called them to, Jesus called them to, let's all say it together. He called them to himself. It was first person. God called you to himself and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lorded over them, and those who are, are great uh, exercise authority over them, yet it's, it shall not be so among you. But whoever desires to be great among you, let him be your servant, and whoever desires to be first among you, let him be your slave. Just as the Son of Man, this is the Son of Man, Jesus calling himself, just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. I will tell you, your job, God is just using for your real assignment. But then you have to ask that question. You have to start asking yourself, am I preparing for that inheritance? Am I preparing? In Philippians 3, let me read. It's uh, the Apostle Paul calls this the upward call. I press toward the goal for the price of the upward calling of God in Christ Jesus. I want to show this quick picture. And uh, forgive me, I'm not good with charts. Okay, this is just something I just drew up. Um, but... We're children of God. Amen? Yes? Who's a son and daughter of Jesus or of the Father? We're all sons and daughters, right? And that's your eternal calling. You will always be sons and daughters. But sometimes, I've, you know, in the conversations that we have, and I would even challenge people with this because they would, they would say, okay, I'm, I'm a son of God. You know, I, I'm a son of, you know, I'm a daughter. But what's your assignment? You know, what's your calling? What's your... That's your identity, and from that identity flows something as you cultivate intimacy, as you pursue Him in a place of prayer and intercession. What is He called you to do? What's your purpose? What's your assignment? And I would say that's what the upward calling is. We don't strive for His affections, right? We don't strive because God loves us. His love is perfect. But what is he perfecting? No, so, so, so in terms of uh, when we, I'm going to get a bit theological here, but, but we are justified. You know, we are, we are saved by grace through faith. But there's the inner work, the sanctification, the inner work that God wants to see. Um, anybody here hate math like I do? <laughs> when I was in college, and um, multiple choice, there was a math. And what I hate most is I would answer, and then there would be like a parenthesis there and say, show your work. <laughs> In the Christian life, we must be able to show our work. Salvation is not through works, but we get to show our work. Amen? We don't work for salvation, sabe? We work out our salvation. There's a difference. There's the inner man working. That's the excellent spirit working in the Lord and partnering with Him. A.W. Tozer says this, that every man abide in the calling wherein he is called, and his work will be as sacred, as sacred as the work of the ministry. It is not what a man does that determines whether his work is sacred or secular. It is why he does it. If you ask yourself, why? Why are you in the university that you're in right now? That's for students. Why are you, have, why have you chosen this career path? At some point, you cannot live your life in autopilot. No? There has to be intention. And that's what Daniel cultivated in his lifestyle of prayer. And the way I see it is, 
is this. And I think uh, I wasn't here when the young adults had uh, been talking about passion, but I'm sure they might have touched on this. But for example, this is your giftings, like your talents, your giftings, your skills, right? That's your gifting. And then your upward calling, what God has called you to, is like right here. And there's, there's a gap. There's a gap between your giftings, your anointings, and the upward calling of Christ. And that gap in between, that's put there intentionally by God so that you would depend on Him. It's put there intentionally. Sometimes when God calls you immediately, we're like Moses. But I stutter, Lord. David was anointed king, but I'm just a shepherd. There's the gap between what God has called you to do and your giftings, your skills, and anointings. And as you depend on God, what is He asking you through the gap? Maybe you should get a degree in this. You know, maybe it's that simple. Maybe it's for you to get counseling. Or maybe it's for you to, to connect with someone. Maybe it's for you to finally reach out to that person you know, years ago that has been, uh, the relationship has been you know, a strain. And now it's time to get restored. And that propels you to the upward calling of God. You ready to receive inheritance? <laughs> That's the gap. And I love how A.W. Tozer uh, says it. It's time, maybe it's time to revisit why we do what we do. And we ask that individually. And we ask that here, uh, sometimes in our staff meetings, that becomes the fuel for the work. Why are we here? Why are we at Gateway? Why are we in this community? Why do we do what we do? Can we all close our eyes? Just, I, I want to have that conversation. I still have a few slides, but just here. Just, just pause here real quick. Why? Ask the Lord why. Why have you brought me here? Maybe it's just you just getting a reminder. This is why, Lord, and God wants to add wind, fuel in your season. And this is how I would frame the big why, why we do what we do. Because let's make no mistake, we are partakers of the inheritance. But who gets to inherit the kingdoms of the earth? It's Jesus. So I just wanted to show this quick. This is, this is the why I've been journeying, at, at least with my walk in the Lord and has helped me even in the decisions that I make uh, in ministry, you know, in business, or in other things. It's this why. In Psalm 110, verse 3, The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand, that I make your enemies your footstool. And I wanted to show this real quick. Where is Jesus sitting right now? When he ascended to have he seated at the right hand of the Father. Here we see David. We see the psalmist prophesying of what's going to happen. He's, this is, I believe this psalm is actually about the second coming, not about the first coming. Because Jesus is already seated at the right hand. And you don't see it in English, but you will see it in the Hebrew. Nakakapital yung first Lord which is Yehovah or Jehovah. And the Lord said to my Lord, the next Lord is small letters, which means Adonai, which is another word for the Messiah, for, for Jesus. So it's Yehovah, the Ancient of Days, the vision of Daniel, speaking to the Son of Man, Adonai. Okay. Sit at my right hand, and I will make this happen. And um, this connects to Psalm 2 because uh, I'm not going to show the whole verse. But then he, show, he actually talks about the rod of iron, you know. Or your rod of authority will come from Zion. But let's go to, to Psalm 2. In Psalm 2, I will declare the decree, and here it is again. The Lord Jehovah said to me, and the me there is the word Elion, which means Elohim. 
So in 1.10, we, we see Jehovah speaks to Adonai. Now it's Jehovah speaking to Elohim. It's the Father and the Son. They're in communion here. They are having a conversation. In the beginning of the psalm, we see the nations raging. Kings and queens are plotting. And, and God, the Ancient of Days, he, sabi, he sits on His throne and He laughs. He's not intimidated by what's happening. There's going to be wars and rumors of wars, but God is not intimidated. He sits on His throne. He sees all of these things happening on the earth. He looks at His Son and He says, You are My Son. Today I have begotten you. Ask of me. Say, ask. Ask of me and I will give you the nations for your inheritance, the ends of the earth for your possession. Psalm 110. The Lord said to my Lord, sit in my right hand. If you actually jump two verses, it's the verses that we use in J-Rev. Um, your young people would come to volunteer. The, the, the context of the volunteerism was to respond to the Father's heart in giving the Son His inheritance. Men and women, young people, both young and old, they're going to receive visions and dreams in the last days. It's going to be about giving Jesus finally His inheritance in the earth. John Piper said this, missions exist because worship doesn't. Let's ask ourselves again, why? What's, why are we doing what we're doing? And I, I feel strongly in my heart because there's been a lot of shaking. And, you know, even, even within the church, you know, even our own uh, ministries, there's been shaking. And sometimes we don't know what's, what's going to happen. We don't know. And, you know, the, the enemy has been out to get our relationships. He's, he's sowing discord. He's sowing, you know, all these things. Then we, we get to ask ourselves, why are we doing what we're doing? because of this it's Jesus Jesus is coming for his inheritance he's coming back if I could say it as plainly as that he's coming for his inheritance you look at the parable of the talents the minas and the parable of the ten virgins it's about someone a king who leaves and waits until his inheritance is prepared when he comes back. Jesus is ready to receive his inheritance. Maybe we're not ready for him to come back. That's why we need to prepare. That's why there's a voice crying out in the wilderness saying, prepare the way. That's the declaration. We prepare the way of the Lord. In Revelation 22, I'm going to call the worship team. Behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his work. The inner work. That's why we, we started talking about even our trials, our traumas, you know, that, that God does not expose a wound to shame us, but to heal us so that we get to finally cross and break through. That's why we started having conversations. So what does the favor of God look like in my life? Is, is He going to bless me just for the sake of the blessing? No, there's the favor of God that when He said to Abraham, I'm going to bless you so that you'll be a blessing to the nations. This is their inheritance. This is what we get to partake in. This is what we get to partner with Him. So I'm just going to lead us into this space to so respond to the Lord. Just worship Him. Let's, let's go thank Him. Can we just begin to enter that place, place of intercession and thank Him? For every open door, I call you faithful. And I just want to thank you, Lord, for every mountain, for every time you brought me through. I call you faithful, and I just want to thank you, Lord, for your forgiveness, 
for how you never turned away. I call you faithful, and I just want to thank you, Lord, for your salvation. You paid the price I couldn't pay. I call you faithful, and I just want to We're going to sing this part again, but if you notice... I just felt this as you were worshiping earlier, that we were thinking of what He's already done. But as we sing this again, can we frame it in our hearts and in our minds that we're also thanking Him for what He's about to do, that He's going to bring us through, that we, we're, we're hanging on in His faithfulness, for the open doors that He's about to open, for the favor that He's about to release to this house, for the favor that He's about to release to your family. For the favor He's about to release even where He has placed you in, in your school, in your job, in your workplace, or your business. And even, you know, it's not gonna, we know it's not going to be a perfect walk, but He's there to pick us up. He's going to be faithful to forgive us. He's going to be faithful to bring us through. If you're saying yes to that, we're going to sing this again. And I want you to stand, but sing this as if we're looking forward to what He's about to do. Thank you, Lord. For every morning, let's thank Him. Yeah. 